After you got your knockout win, it seemed that uh, you uh, had said some words uh, towards the direction of Errol Spence. I was just curious, like, what was said there, and what did you hear back? No, I, uh, uh, I said it's time to go fishing, <laughs> and I put my reel on. It's time to go fishing. You know, uh, it's time to make these big, these big fights happen. Man. And I've been saying, I've been ready. Uh, it's time to take my my career to the next level and uh, fight these big guys, whether it's Errol Spence, Bud, or uh, Keith Dern. You know, uh, I'm ready. And the reason why he said that because. Spence said he's a big fish. And uh, my last question. My drop. You, yeah. uh, how, much, how much better do you feel you can be? And what haven't you shown yet uh, in these fights? Uh, yeah, I just said it before. I ain't seen nothing yet. You know, I only see about 30% of me. You know, just getting in my bed, my groove. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, next time I can show a little bit more tools. But if not, I can knock out early again. So be it. Right. Anyone else for boots? All right, how about we give them one last hand before we get back? I'll probably get started. I should be here in a few minutes. How you like fighting outside? If I, in the outdoor arena, how'd you like that? Was that different? Was you cool? It, yeah, it was, it was a pretty cool venue. Yeah, nice, nice, you know, nice atmosphere, nice crowd. Fighting outside was wonderful. Yeah, so did you? You didn't quite steal the crowd, do you think? Because that was a great fight afterwards. What's your thoughts on that fight afterwards? <laughs> A fighter like Brian, uh, Brian Castano, does does he get credit for the boxing world for uh, being able to come back? Number one, having the, the jaw, the steel chin that he had that he showed tonight, but then staying staying in the fight and coming back in the fight. Does did you get does he get respect from the, the fighting community? With the fight that yeah, thank you, Jerome. Um, 
you're obviously one of the best fighters in Philadelphia right now. An uncrowned, uh, uncrowned champion. Uh, uncrowned, not quite the champion. Uh, you know, we talk about Thurman. Uh, your relationship with Danny Garcia, is it good enough for you guys to get into the ring? I don't have a relationship with nobody. I mean, I'm going to see first. Uh -huh. take that fight, I think you would fight Danny Garcia? Yeah, I, but I think Danny would be 54. So. Mm -hmm. we'll what do you uh, think about the Philadelphia, uh, the Philadelphia fight scene right now as far as all the champions that are coming out of there? Philadelphia is doing great. You know, we got cool stuff. You know, he, he got the WBO and the WBC. Mm -hmm. He fights in the fourth. Uh, you got me coming up. I feel like Philly about to take over and you know, get back on the map. You, know? mm -hmm. this, you put yourself on the map here on the West Coast audience. Yeah. You fought in Las Vegas last time, yeah. LA this time. Do you want to start uh, coming into more of these uh, other venues outside of uh, yeah. the East Coast? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to build my fan base. You know, uh, maybe I fight in New York at the birthday or something, my next fight. You know, I'm trying to, just, I'm trying to build my, my fan base up. You know, uh, Mm -hmm. And the, actually, the Terrence Crawford comment that I made was more like he wasn't getting the fights that he wanted for the longest time. And it's, it feels like you might be trending in that direction. As when I was talking to Cameron, he's like, you might have the same problem with him not getting the, the fights that we want. Do you think Keith Thurman is going to come down to a money issue at the end of the day? Yeah, I think that it comes down to a money issue, but I think I don't Showtime has some money. They'll make it happen. <laughs> How does that feel to be the face of the Showtime now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Do you see yourself the same way Errol Spence was built up by Showtime? They take the same blueprint with you uh, and, and do the same? No, I'm not sure what they got to do. I, I know I'm going to put it in front of me. I'm not going down there. I can see anything you want it. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> and it looks easy, everybody they put in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> right? The left or the right? Yeah, it does. Espinosa promised him a nice, uh, no, nice fight. He did. I heard him. Green fight. Hey. Yeah, so you go to his you know, you got you got a verse for Spence. What's your verse on Spence? Hey, you doing fishing? That's cool. I was out there. That's fine. Okay, that's good. So, you have to do something. Say, that's L back there. That's Coach Sean. The brick yard in the building. Juice, Juice, man. That's Woodini. Yo, my pop head? over there. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> it's too many players. Uh, I can't hear him. I, I know I was coming out. Of my you said I've never seen him? Yeah. <laughs> what was he saying? Just on, I can't hear him. But he saw you. Yeah, he saw me. He said, I don't know. Let's see your fisher. Are you, uh, Are you a fisherman? You're bringing me in there. Well, it's a major fight, but first he has to fight. Bro. Yeah. And who do you like in this? Uh, either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> either one of them. We all like yeah. either one of them. It's a good shooter. 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 It's a good I seen how your, how your team, uh, you know, came at them. They said there's a y'all going fishing and there's a shark in the ocean. Uh huh. Uh, it was, it was a good. <laughs> it was a good one. Yeah, yeah, we like frying fish. We cook. We like frying fish. Chef. Chef. Like I said, they ain't seen that. Chef. We just turned it up. Obviously, we want to Why did you feel you have to? Like, is that a way you feel you're gonna bring Spence into the ring with that kind of of a performance or taunting and whatnot? Let him know. Listen. I mean. I'm not, I'm not going to have oh. the idea of it. Like I said, he has a question, but he got a problem with blood. I'm here. You know, I'll, I'll come to you. Yeah, um, what did you make of the main event? Uh, main event. Uh, 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 u
It's a, it's a very deep division, 154, very deep division. And each fight we've shown at 154 has been really exciting. Highly skilled, but also a lot of action, a lot of throwing. It's been, it's been, it's been a wild ride. Yeah. I got a quick one for you. I know. I, I, I don't know if I'm all the way excited to be more. For real? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was like a statement yeah. or something. Hey, also, like, hey, you couldn't find your white socks. What happened? I don't know. I was looking for white socks. I don't know. Too white in the ass. I don't know. Where he, he, he wants to do a versus with yellow beans. Yellow beans. Yeah. That's hysterical. Wait until I tell him I got. Because he pointed out. He's like, yeah. I looked down. I was like, yo, it didn't even match. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. When you when you picking fighters to uh, like fight against him, like what are what are you looking for? Are you looking for somebody to bring excitement? Or are you looking for somebody to challenge him? First, let, let me state that that's not really my area. Okay. Not my area. However, um, you know, his his responsibility, his team's responsibility, his management, right? Cameron Duncan and his management. They're looking for, you know, the, the next step up each time. Oh, hold on. Hey there. Okay. California, you know, uh, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do like seven minutes with Castano and then we'll bring down. Oh, yes, no problem. All right? All right, cool. You got it. Yeah, no way. Um, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for your people. He's late for everything today. We need to be relatively quick with Castano. What? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get him. Go get him. He's cool. All right, folks. We got uh, Castano coming up. The his little post fight. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe subscribe button, fans. Again, we got the. We here at the post fight press conference for. We just talked to Boots in it for a good a, a good bunch of minutes. Uh, Brian Castano is on his way to the ring, and then we're gonna have. Um, Charlo is going to come out to the ring. Hit that like button, fans. Come on, fans. To help me out, man. Hit that like button. So you tuned in. Go ahead. Hit that like button. It don't cost you nothing. I'm just bringing you fresh content. I'm just bringing you fresh content for, for free. All we ask that you hit that like button. Here we got Derrick James over here. Let's go get Derrick James. Let's go see what Derrick James is talking about. <laughs> Congratulations. We'll, we'll talk to him. We'll talk to him later. Here go champ. Here go champ side. Again, hit that like button. I got a bunch of people in here looking. Hit that like button. Hit that like button, friends. Just help me out. Help us out. Hit that like button. I'm trying to bring you some content for for free. So backstage conference. All I ask is that you hit the like button. That's all I ask. Oh. We're gonna get um Yeah, yeah, so we got some we got some good content. Um yeah, there we go. Hit that like button. I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys again. I'm out here doing my thing. <laughs> bring you guys content i just want you guys to uh i i just i just want you guys to uh 
hit that like button, show some appreciation. That's all we do. Hit that like button, show some appreciation. We're all good. How you got Wi-Fi, dog? What kind of service you got? It's on AT and T. We outside. We outside. We outside. You should. Everybody should have Wi-Fi. Should be working. Yeah. We got these guys feverish. We got Greg with LA Times and Keith Idick over there writing feverishly getting their articles out. Uh, I gotta get I gotta get I got mine as Lance Pokemon. Again, waiting on Cassandra. Waiting on Cassandra to come in here. And then we're going to have Charlo. Um, just this exclusive content behind the scenes. You got to see you gotta see what's going on here. But we hurry up to get over here. Then we got to wait because the boxes are here. This is a pretty crazy trip here, too. To come out. We had to come out of the arena to get here. We had to come out of the arena, like almost across the street. Um, this is a soccer, this is a soccer, you guys can't see it, but this is a soccer uh, stadium, and this is like the soccer practice field behind us, behind the people that were on the soccer, like this is turf right here, like this is like little astral turf. I tripped out, I thought it was grass, but you can feel it when you walk on this astral turf. And you can see some of the workout equipment, obviously, so uh, this is where the Galaxy, their stadium is here. And then they, they practice here as well, so that's why the stalker. Oh, and the U.S. Uh, Olympic team practices here too. Um, the trial team. So here we just waiting. We got. Uh, I don't know what the hell it is. I don't know what the hell the problem is, or we're, we're waiting on. Well, I know what we're waiting on. I don't know what the problem is. What's taking us so long? But Casano is on his way. I know that. I heard that from. Robert Espinoza, Mr. Showtime, who is, uh, I don't know where he went, but I was just talking to him a second ago. Um, if you've been on, if you've been on my live, you, you know, I just asked him about um, price fixing, or not price fixing, but uh, match fixing. Again, appreciate you guys for hitting that like button. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Again, just trying to bring you guys some exclusive content. You see you got Champ Side over there interviewing. You got Marcus Hayes over there waiting on the interview. I don't know, my man Kenneth's pushing people away like it's not a scrum, but it should be a scrum because we're all out here. Give us all something to do. I saw uh, Derek James in here. He disappeared really quick. So. But thank you guys for tuning in. How, how'd you, what'd you guys think of the fight? Hit me in the comments. Let me know what you guys think of the fight. Um, what do you guys think of Boots Ennis? I mean, Boots Ennis looked impressive. Although he was in there less than six minutes, so fuck. I mean, Ennis looks impressive. If Boots Ennis looks impressive, you hit that like button. Because he looked really, he looked really uh, impressive. Um, yeah, see, if Boots Ennis looked impressive to you, again, hit that like button. Um, let me know what you think of the uh, main event. I mean, I couldn't find. I had it um, nine to. Th excuse me. Here, here we go. Here we go, Castanio. Here we go. Castanio, wife, wife, Castanio, friend. A man that gave us two incredible performances. A true warrior. Uh, Either or, either or, a true warrior. Uh, the first fight, back and forth, back and forth, came out to a draw in this fight. It's where you reach team an incredible performance. That's exactly what both men did here tonight. And this fight lived up to the hype in the rematch. Unfortunately, he came up short, but he certainly does not need to hang his head down low because he left it all in the ring. Both men left it back and forth, tight rounds. And he came up just a bit short. The pride of Argentina, Brian El Boxy Castaño.
Also, when you ask a question, allow Martin Batar, our translator, he's going to translate. Uh, and, oh, you will? Okay. All right. We'll, we'll resume, but feel free to continue. Media, app, please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you as soon as we can. Ese plan de él de completamente no tratar de pelear fue parte del plan de él. Yo creo que sí, creo que, que su estilo es así también, ¿no? Y él, la estrategia de él, la adopción, es capaz. Él decía que iba a venir a atacarme, pero no, no. realmente él lo, que, lo que le salía mejor fue boxear. A partir de sexto en adelante, vio que le resultó boxear y, y eso hizo. ¿no? Uh, the question was, uh, uh, I, admire, I admire you and respect to you uh, because you, you really brought the fight, uh, fight uh, to Charlo. Charlo didn't want to really press the action. And uh, do you agree with that? And then Brian said, yeah, but well, that was probably his plan. He, uh, he never really, really pressed me, but that's his style. He always is. And uh, he did what he got what he had to do. Yeah. Brian, uh, Willis Swaggy, boxeo cubano. Me imagino que tú te tienes que sentir bien orgulloso de lo que tú hiciste en la primera pelea y en esta pelea. Porque yo sé que por lo menos... What, what question you want to ask, Brian Castaño? You got a question? What question you want to ask? Uh, you got you to be very proud of what you did in the last uh, fight and tonight, of course. Uh, Including myself, so you gotta be proud of what you did, and every Latino is proud of you. Well, this is it. This is official as it gets. If it's not official, this is as official as it gets. Well, this is it. This is official as it gets. Well, this is it. This is official as it gets. Well, this is it. This is Realmente me enganchó y, y bueno, lo pagué arriba del ring, creo que me protegí un poco. Eh, pero bueno, peleas son peleas, eh, estoy con ganas, con fuerza para seguir adelante. Get it on your streaming, if you're streaming on Showtime with this press conference, you didn't get everything. como para seguir adelante. If you're streaming on Showtime, you didn't get everything you got here on Voice of Friends. I tried to do the best war possible that I promised that I would do. Uh, I feel that I won the, the first fight, uh, but tonight he caught me, he caught me, and uh, that was it. Uh, nothing to say about, but I, I feel like I still have a lot. It's on the voice of the fans page, that's all that matters. All right, James Hall, the boxing associate. Brian, I know that there was a lot of uh, chatter back and forth as far as like trash talk, but by the end of the fight, both of y'all gave uh, respect to each other as competitors. What did it mean to uh, get that uh, compliment from Jamel Charlo as he said that you're a warrior and a really, really good fighter? Well, I think that the well, Taylor, we appreciate you for tuning in, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. That's my man, Steve, with the Mahat Kudu. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we both know that we are warriors and uh, we go into the ring to leave it all. And that's, that's what we did. So if it's a warrior, I'm a warrior. Oh, I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy about that. Fights are fights at this level. Es un momento donde uno comete un error y pasa esas cosas que todos al piso. It takes just a little mistake uh, uh, for, for it, but you can pay for really bad at this level of boxing. That's a okay. question back here.
Hey, Brian, Cameron Buford, Voice of the Fans, LA News Observer. Uh, congratulations on an awesome performance. Um, even in the loss, you, you showed, I think you gained some fans here um, in, in LA. In the second round, it looked like he caught you early in the second round. And I want to know about kind of what do you what did you feel he did differently in this fight that he didn't do in the second fight? He talked about fighting off the ropes a little bit better, which it looked like he did. And can you explain that to us? Boxingscene.com. I just have uh, two questions for you. Uh, in the beginning of the fight, did you feel that you hurt him at any point because you got him to back off and uh, he initiated some clinching there in the first couple of rounds? Do you feel that you hurt him at any point? Uh, la primera, primera pregunta es: ¿Crees que durante los primeros rounds lo tuviste sentido en algunos pasajes porque se veía como que él agarraba mucho hacia muchos clinches aquí que lo conectaste, que lo sentiste? Sí, creo que él sabe que, que también pego, no soy un, como dije en ese momento, un poco más en Chile Mayana, que pegue y tira, pero no. eh, donde pego duele y realmente lo he lastimado, pero, pero bueno, eh, realmente estoy contento por la forma que hice, creo que puedo prolijar cosas y tratar de, 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 de trabajar de otra manera, pero eh, se dio como se dio. Hoy en día estamos eh, un poco dolidos por esta derrota, pero seguimos hablando. Yeah, I think I, I connected to him and uh, he probably hurt uh, some of my punches, but uh, obviously I'm not a puncher like my Dana or Matisse, but I can still punch, he knows it. Um, uh, but like I said again, uh, I'm, I'm happy that I, with my performance, despite the loss, uh, uh, of course, and uh, I feel that there's some big room for corrections and improvements in my books. Some other questions for Sebastian and for Brian. I'm not sure if you guys are aware what the scorecards read, but uh, he won eight of nine rounds on one of the scorecards. He was ahead 89, 82, 88, 83, and 87, 84. I'm just wondering if you guys could comment on what the scoring was up to the point of the knockout. My comment on that? Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, even worse than in Texas. That's about Linda Trump. <laughs> Realmente, creo que 
eh, tal vez tengo que, no sé, modificar mi estilo y tratar de, de, de boxear de contra y, y, y tirar por la mano. Probably I have to start changing my style and become become myself a counter puncher. This is not working. Yeah, judge me. Really? Hey, can you have a play? Brad, you got five in here? Is that a good idea? Is that a good idea? I think so. It was a good idea, really. But I don't know. I don't know. I think that... Fue una pelea de poder a poder, donde la gente, la gente también eh, se prendió en el estadio y eso es, es muy lindo, ¿no? Tratar de transmitirle eso a la gente y que la gente esté enfurecida por, por, por la pelea, la verdad que eh, es hermosa. Uh, it was it was definitely a tough fight, I need to watch it of course, uh, uh, but what I, what, I, what, I really, what I really like is the atmosphere, how the fans and the people get caught. Uh, on, in the heat of the of the, of the fight, uh, it's always it's always a pleasure for me to transmit that to to fans. That's why that's my sign. Okay, guys, just one more question for Brian. What? Yeah, for this one, one more question. Uh, did Charlo uh, put you uncomfortable position when he uh, started boxing you? Creo que me incomodó porque yo esperaba que venga a, a entrenar, pero realmente dije, bueno, aprovecho el parrón para descansar un poquito y terminar 10, 11, 12 eh, con fuerza, pero realmente no le saco méritos a Charlo, su gran peleador, peleador fuerte, donde hoy le tocó ganar, pero, pero bueno, peleas son peleas, como te digo, eh, como dije anteriormente. Para Dios quiera pueda tener otra oportunidad de pelear con él o si no, como quiera que venga, pero eh, realmente no, no hay que sacar el mismo. Bueno, somehow he put me uh, uh, in a. Uh, somehow comfortable when he started boxing uh, because uh, of uh, all he said uh, in the beginning days. Uh, I was expecting to be more aggressive, but it's not that I'm taking anything for, from him, away from him. He's a great boxer, uh, but he, yeah, he, he, he put me in an uncomfortable position. And, uh, well, it is what it is, fights are fights, and uh, I hope to have a, a new opportunity, either is it against him or other, but uh, yeah, I will, I will have another opportunity. Hi Brian, Duncan McKenzie McCarthy from Fox Sports Australia. Great fight. Uh, I'm not sure if you knew, but Aussie fighter Tim Zhu was watching the fight tonight. He says he has a similar style to you, brings a lot of pressure like you. How do you think Tim would go in a fight against Jamel, and how would you go in a fight against Tim? No, no sé si he tenido la posibilidad de ver a Tim Zhu, que tuvo ahí para pelear, y qué pensás, como que él dice que si tiene un motivo. All right, fans, come on, we got over 250 people in here. Somebody else hit that like button. We're missing some likes, 250 people watching. Call a friend, tell them to tune in, and then also tell them to hit that like button. Thank you guys for your participation. Thank you for your support. Pelea, son peleas, Charlo es un gran peleador también. Y creo que Siu todavía se tiene que medir con, con, con otros peleadores antes de pelear con él. Eh, creo que todavía no está aprobado al 100%, pero si le dan la oportunidad, creo que tenga bueno. A mí me gustaría pelear con Siu, que es una pelea donde él la estuvo buscando hace mucho tiempo. Y no tengo problema. Si se hace si acá en Estados Unidos, yo peleo con cualquiera. Uh, first of all, uh, I didn't know uh, he was present in Davis. Uh, he's a great fighter, uh, but uh, he's probably a little not ready for the Charlos. Uh, he should face another opponent uh, before that, even though 
like you look great, like you feel terrible with shit. Um, so, but this is a this is a business. So if they, I know he was looking after me. So uh, if I'm offered a fight with him in the U.S. and makes sense, uh, this is business, uh, and I will take it. Mike Covinger, ESPN. Brian, congrats on another great fight. Um, yeah, you mentioned Sim Zhu was there. Sebastian Condor was also ringside. Um, 154 is really heating up right now, and obviously you're still going to be in a lot of really big fights. Is there somebody, do you have a preference for who you want to fight next besides Charlo? Nos pide los comentarios del colega, no solo estaba Su, sino estaba Sebastián Fulgora también viendo la pelea. Así que la esta división está demasiado caliente. ¿Tenés alguna preferencia en especial de pelear con alguien? Como dije anteriormente, pelea con el que sea. Con el que el público diga, eh, Castaño, pelea a este. No tengo ningún problema. Eh, a mí me encantan los retos difíciles y voy como quiera, tengo que ver con Tizú, tengo que ver con, con, con el que sea, ahí estaré, eh, con fundadora, con lo que sea, realmente eh, son buenos peleadores que me gustaría enfrentarlos, no hay ningún problema, a 154 libras, eh, está picando. I'll fight anybody, and, uh, because I, I like the tough challenges. Uh, and you're right, you're right, uh, the, this division is really hot at the moment, but uh, I'll, I'll face anyone they put in front of me, and especially I would like to fight what people like me to fight, so I'm ready. Brian, thank you, Sebastian, thank you. Congratulations on a great fight. I think it'll go down as one of the best of the year, if not the best, and maybe the best in this legendary game. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hit that like button, fans. Hit that like button, fans. Hit that like button. I'll be up in a few minutes. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, Charlo, Charlo uh, fought his fight that he started boxing me a little bit more as the rounds went on. And then, you know, I was trying to adjust. I was trying to play to play my game too. But credit to him for making those adjustments in the second half of the fight. And then he just, he got me with, I don't think, I don't know if it was a cross or some kind of straight punch, but he got me good. Then, you know, I stumbled and then he got me again and then I fell, you know, and that's that's the way it happened. And what can you do about it? How did he feel about the, the fight overall, like in terms of the scorecards heading into that round? ¿Cómo te sentís de la pelea en general y lo que hablaba de las tarjetas, de cómo el puntaje estaba un poco desesperado? Normalmente el puntaje... All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready for the second part of our main event. The man gave us two incredible performances last year, and now in what we already discussed, potential fight of the year contender. And he is now boxing's new undisputed king in the super welterweight division as he is making his way over here. 
as we now we have a trainer, Derek James, who in my opinion is one of the best trainers in the world. I don't think this man gets enough credit for what he's been able to do with guys like Errol Spence Jr. And now a new undisputed king, Jermel Ironman Charlo, as he makes his way with devastating knockout of Brian is the undisputed